The year 2023 has been an extraordinary year. It's been a year of global disruption, regional warfare, central banks trying to beat inflation, and Western democracies trying to hold their societies together in the teeth of a lot of cultural differences and internal trauma. We've seen the ongoing war in Ukraine. We've seen the eruption in the Middle East, now a war between Israel and Hamas. And of course, we see more concern about China, China's assertion, and whether at some point we'll see a conflict involving China over Taiwan. The bottom line here from 2023 is that United States leadership is more important than ever. America is the central player in all of these conflicts, in the Ukraine, in the Middle East, and of course, balancing China in the Indo-Pacific. But the irony of this situation, the great problem, of course, is the internal situation in the United States, the dismal politics, the upcoming presidential election, which looks like it might be a contest between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, a divided America, a fractured America. And so the situation then is, can America get over these internal divisions so it can play the sort of leadership role in the world that's more important than ever? At home in Australia, in 2023, unfortunately, it was a year of division. Australia looked a fractured country over the proposal by the Prime Minister for the Indigenous Voice to Parliament. This dominated the politics of much of the year, and it saw this extraordinary split in the country, this division in the country between elites on the one hand, corporations, celebrities, community leaders, professional groups, affluent suburbs, inner city electorates, all supporting the yes case for The Voice, and the no case, which prevailed 61-39, getting support from the outer suburbs, the regions, rural Australia. And in a sense, what I think we saw here was a revolt of the people against elites, against politicians, lecturing them what to do. The Albanese government had an extraordinary year. It started the year in a very powerful position in the polls, but it finished with the Prime Minister being brought down to earth. It was an extraordinary odyssey from a triumphant position for Anthony Albanese to one where he looked uh, a very vulnerable politician. Now, we shouldn't exaggerate the government's difficulties. There's no doubt that the government is in significant problem and it seems in many ways to have lost its way. But it's a mistake to think that simply because the Albanese government is in difficulty, this automatically means a vote for the Peter Dutton-led coalition. Treasurer Jim Chalmers has spelled out that he's confident over the course of the next year we'll see inflation wound back, we'll see the cash rate falling, we'll see real wages moving ahead. Overall, there are really important questions for the government to consider as the year ends and it goes into the summer break. Anthony Albanese and his senior ministers need to rethink, they need to regroup, and they need to come back early next year stronger than ever. If they can't do that, then I think possibly the result of the next election will be a minority Labor government. I think it's most unlikely Peter Dutton will win the next election, but the danger for Albanese is being reduced to minority government. That's where we are at the end of 2023.